So, um, I think in terms of this report, I think it's to firstly acknowledge the, um, the, the work that we've done to date, um, but also to approve the proposed actions uh, towards where we're becoming a living wage borough, because clearly we're a living wage council that we need to become a living wage borough. And as I say, they're set out in, in paragraph uh, 3.6. So, uh, I think really that's um, the, the, the gist of this report. So, are we all um, in agreement with those recommendations? Can we agree those with each other? Okay, thank you very much. Great, okay, so that takes us on then to uh, item four, which is update on the uh, community budgets. The, it was called community budgets, now called public service transformation. It's got much more stuff, that's why I'm thinking on it. Um, what this report does is to set out the, the work that we're doing in, in the area of community budgets. This is all about uh, us working more innovatively with our partners um, and you know, getting out of our organisational silos. And we're part of, I think it's the, the, there's been kind of two waves of these um, pilots that the government has announced. And we're in the second wave um, with the legal authorities set out in paragraph 3.4. Um, and what this report does is to um, just bring members <coughs> up to, to speed with the progress of um, I'm just going to touch on um, a couple of aspects, but I, I know Graham, you, you've been involved in detailed discussions with the government around our, our work in this area. Can you teach us a little bit about um, how things are going? Yes, Joe, I think uh, the fact that uh, the government chose Will on the 9th of the pilot is a tribute to the work of the council and the increasing education of the council uh, in the public sector. Because I know that uh, a considerable number of our councillors apply to the second way that we have attended. I think that's the first thing which we recognise the credit that the council is now getting nationally as <coughs> an innovator in uh, public and public services. The idea behind this report is to <coughs> pull together uh, the public sector to deliver. 
Yeah, just, just a quick line check. I mean, I mean, as we can see from the executive summary of the report uh, here at the start, uh, in March 2012, the government announced a £10 million package of measures to support empty properties on high streets and provide uh, resources to those areas that were simply affected by the riots in August 2011. Uh, Wirral was one of 100 local authorities allocated £100,000 grant funding uh, to support those areas that were impacted by the disturbances. Members will recall the disturbances at the time, which were focused mainly around the Charlie Cross area of Birkenhead, Head, and they were quite horrific. Um, you know, business experienced a major loss of football and reduction in spend, and so huge damage affecting those businesses. Uh, and for that reason, the report chair uh, seeks cabinet approval for the allocation, as you say, of High Street Innovation Fund to the Wirral Chamber of Commerce to work up proposals for the establishment of a potential Birkenhead uh, business improvement uh, district. That's a bit for sure. Wirral Chamber of Commerce, and you might ask, what, why then? Well, why then? Because uh, given that they already operate a shop watch and pub watch scheme in the area, and it's more likely to secure business engagement given its role on the ground and having that relationship with businesses across the world. You will look at, uh, you will see in 3.2 of the report, where it talks about as well, a steering group being formed to manage the activities of the bid on a day-to-day -day basis. And we're asked to agree a local board council will be nominated as the local authority bid steering group, uh, on, on, on that bid steering group. Members, uh, sorry, and the strategic director of regeneration acts in the capacity of the strategic advisors for matters related to council business. Uh, bids, Chair, are different in two key respects to other regeneration initiatives that they go on in towns and cities across the UK. Firstly, they provide new and additional activity to complement uh, what is already going on, and secondly, they're driven by the private sector. They are, led by, they are led, financed, and managed by the business that tr that the business that trade within the bid boundary. Um, based on best practice elsewhere, they have been very successful elsewhere in the country. Um, businesses with, within that area will pay a fee based on 1% of their annual business rates in order to fund improvements within the bid area. The services it provides are decided by the businesses themselves taking part in the scheme and are similar to those of the council, of the council and other uh, partners and organisations currently provide. Uh, bids elsewhere in the country, Chair, are currently uh, supporting a wide range of projects and, and, and also employing, and this is important, a town centre manager to take it forward. And so some of the projects that include, and this is not exhaustive, include reducing crime, improving safety, signage and lighting, better management of the my town economy, um, coordinating um, marketing and promotion campaigns and attracting new businesses and investments. In order for a bid to be approved, the majority of businesses must vote yes in a ballot. If a yes vote is achieved, all businesses in that area, as I say, will pay a 1% fee on top of their business rates for a minimum of five years. After five years, a second vote is required to keep the bid running for an additional five years. This is where the, the, the new town centre manager will come in, come, in, come into play. It will be up to them to really push the programme and really push each other to the benefits of, of, the, um, of the activity that is being proposed. And canvassing of local business to ensure it's safe. A yes vote is achieved in, within, within the, the time frame, which is 12 months. Uh, if it is approved, and this is important as well, it will be self financing going forward. Bid manager himself or herself will be funded from the levy collected from businesses in that area. And the, the remaining funding will be used directly for improvements in Birkenhead. <coughs> Just to finish, Chair, the, the improvements that are made in Birkenhead will be cited by the businesses in, in engagement activity and will include consultation workshops, focus groups, launch events, online surveys, door to door cameras, and so forth. To finish, I think it's an exciting and well tested concept that has been very successful elsewhere, as I said, which, along with the plans and proposals being currently developed by Neptune Developments, 
that will come put before us shortly for consideration. Uh, uh, I believe it's an exciting time for Burton and I believe this will add greatly to the vibrancy and potential of the town centre to grow and attract further investments. On that basis, Chair, I will ask Cabinet to agree the recommendations of the annual report and we've just mentioned them briefly. Uh, it's recommended that members approve the use of the High Street Innovation monies, fund monies at £100,000 to support the Woodall Chamber of Commerce to work up proposals to relate to the establishments of a Birkenhead bid, as I've just described and as I mentioned in the report. Two, that the Head of Legal and Democratic Services be authorised to agree and enter into a grant funding agreement between the Council and the Woodall Chamber of Commerce. And lastly, the Strategic Director of the Regeneration Environment and a local ward councillor and kind of a program <coughs> councillor Brian Kenny next to me. It's nominated as the local authority bid steering group of members. Well, of the hard nominated. Yeah. I can say, can I ask the cabinet to agree that? <coughs> <coughs>
the same evaluation framework would be used with any new site coming forward which would be considered if it was any the current identified site could not progress. The level of financial support which would be afforded to each game will be dependent upon factors including land value, build costs, build type and a number of units. But it is anticipated that we will be on average in the order of £15,000 per unit based on an anticipated average grant rate provided by the Homes and Communities Agency for its new bidding round. With the council supporting one of the units of the above schemes, this could see in total 288 units of new housing being built overall. This would support the council's vision of driving growth and aspiration by stimulating economic growth, opportunities for local labour force, new apprenticeships and training places, providing a catalyst to generate renewed confidence on sites where activity is stalled due to the economic downturn and providing opportunities for residents to remain in the borough and provide much needed homes for those in housing. Therefore, members are asked to approve the framework for the use of the 1.5 million allocated to help stimulate affordable housing building in the world. Thank you, George. Um, can I just support you, really, and, and say how, how delighted I am to see this report here? Um, you know, there's no question in my mind that this is a really important project, and it, you know, it shows what a positive <coughs> role a local local authority can play. Addressing the kind of issues that you've mentioned, George, in, in, in some of our most uh, deprived areas. Because we all know, just going back to an earlier thing uh, around addressing health inequality, the link, for example, between poor housing and poor health. So, you know, this is absolutely sort of vital, I think, if you like. We're really going to raise our living standards in those, in those areas. Uh, and, it, and, it, and it's so clean because it will leave a kind of legacy. So I, I'm delighted to, uh, uh, to see this report here. Just on a very personal yeah. note, it's really pleasing to see the um, proposal will it, it, uh, have an impact as, as well on Church Road, my, my own ward. Um, like you, George, I was at the consultation meeting. Yeah. Um, we had a consultation meeting with residents of last couple of nights around the new housing proposal. And I think, um, and Brian, you were there as well. And the, there was a real kind of positivity in the, uh, an air of excitement uh, from residents that at last um, something's going to happen on those, on those sites and that was really, really pleasing to see. So I, I am delighted um, that, um, that this, this will uh, deliver the, uh, the new housing that, that we need and we'll have all the, the spin-off benefits that I've mentioned. And, you know, um, 100 units for, for our 1.5 million investment, if we can deliver the 280 so I, I think this is a this is a win-win project all around, and I'm just so pleased that we've been able to put to good use uh, 1.5 million uh, pounds of our of our own funding. So uh, can I ask you for also, for, for, yeah, I forgot to mention before on 13 two the recommendation because it is so important that once we get the okay from officers that this is going to go ahead with delegating the person to give it to himself to report back to cabinet. Okay, so we've seen the recommendations in uh, paragraph 13, 31, 32. Any, any other members wish to make any, uh, any comments? No? Okay, so can we agree those recommendations? Yeah. Agreed, thank you, thank you, George. That's agreed. Uh, which takes us on to item 7, which is Governance and Improvement, which is <coughs> Council Engagement of Policy and Performance Committees. Um, and 